Hey everybody, this is my 125 gallon New World tank and today we are going to talk about doing very large water changes but before we do that I'm going to get the tank filling back up we're going to let at least about half of that water fill back up and then we will start talking about what's going on in the tank so we can observe the fish's behavior they're a little freaked out right now because their world's disappearing they can certainly tell when that pressure is dropping so as far as they know the water is draining out of their tank. They fully understand that their water is going away and that's why they're darting and dashing around right now. So this is a really big water change. I'm about to switch it over and start filling it back up. So give me a few minutes and we'll start talking about what's going on in the tank. All right, everybody, if you will notice all of the fish, including the angel fish off to the right there are just chilling out. They're sitting in the current uh, the water in this tank flows in sort of a clockwise direction, so all those fish that are facing from left to right are actually facing upstream. They're heading into the current there, and that's very normal behavior for fish. They're just kind of hanging out, waiting for food to drift along, and it's a nice way to conserve energy while they wait for a free meal. You will notice they're not zipping around, they're not zooming around, they're not overly excited. I shot a video not too long ago about fish uh, do not get the zoomies. They don't get excited after a water change necessarily. They may get more active, they may start spawning or something like that, but they shouldn't dash and zip and zoom around the tank unless that's the fish's normal behavior anyway. Uh, that could be a sign of distress. And that's exactly what I wanted to talk about. Um, and that is the water chemistry. If you're going to do really big water changes like this, and there's a reason I'm doing a really big water change like this, we'll get into that in another video. Uh, this is the perfect type tank for developing old tank syndrome, even though it gets regular maintenance. It's got a ton of biomaterial in it that includes very, very heavily stocked with fish, but you also have to consider all of that wood all of the mulm that collects in there, all of that wood. <laughs> There's a lot of organic material in this tank and all of that organic material breaks down and adds to the dissolved organic material in the water, whether that's nitrate or phosphate or who knows what else i don't even know the nitrate and the phosphate are the only one we ever talk about but there's lots and lots of organic compounds out there that will build up in your tank over time and if you only do so so size water changes etc based on the bio load in the tank you may not be able to get ahead of yourself um as far as you know keeping the water clean and i did a really really big water change about three to four days ago and the nitrates were still really really red after the huge water change so i decided that i need to start working those nitrates down and in my case i can do that by doing a series of really big water changes i could probably get away with darn near draining the tank and then just refilling it but I don't want to do that it's just not necessary uh, I want to ease the fish through it a little more than that and so in my case because I know what my water's chemistry is and it's very very similar to the tank's chemistry I can get away with doing these huge water changes and you can see the fish's behavior doesn't really get uh, erratic. They're probably more reacting to me being here than they are uh, the water change happening. So that is a good indication that I am correct in my assumption that my water is similar enough. And of course I test all those things. I make sure that the water is similar enough. So if you're not sure about your water's chemistry, whether you're talking about the water that's in your tank or your source water, then I would really, really not recommend doing really, really large water changes like this because you can do more damage than good by trying to freshen up the tank and just giving them a really, really big water change once in a while. If that water chemistry is too different or if it's been a really long time between water changes, that may not be the best idea. And again, we will talk about that more in depth when I do my video about old tank syndrome. We're gonna talk about what old tank syndrome really is, how you can identify what's going on in your tank, whether it is old tank syndrome or not. And then if you think you've got old tank syndrome, 
how to deal with it and what to do about it because panicking uh, is the last thing you want to do about it. So we're going to talk about how to correct for that and knowing your water's chemistry is going to be paramount. If you're not sure what your water's chemistry is, you're going to have to take it really, really slow and easy and do small water changes more frequently. If, in my case, you've got very similar water chemistry, you can smack it out in three or four larger water changes over a period of a week or so. So that's my goal. By the end of the week, I want to have the nitrate down to where it's at least in the orange and under the 40 parts per million. Because remember, when you're talking about the nitrate level in the tank, regardless of what you think about the dangers of nitrate itself, the nitrate is just a good proxy. If my nitrate in this tank is getting higher and higher and higher and that valve is getting redder and redder every time I do a water change, that means everything else in this tank is going up too. All of my phosphates, all of the organic materials I was talking about earlier, um, all of it is increasing and that is just setting myself up for disaster down the road if I don't get ahead of it and of course the longer you wait to get ahead of it the worse it will be when you finally do get ahead of it and on a side note I am definitely noticing this minnow right here has a red mark on its side and it looks all swollen I mentioned this in a previous video but they were thrashing around thinking it was dinner time and we couldn't get a good look at it but now you can clearly see something is wrong with that minnow so one of these days I'm going to get in there and thin the herd, get that big piece of wood out of there uh, and reduce the stocking load in this tank a little bit, but that's not going to be today. So make sure you're subscribed. That's about all I really wanted to talk about anyway, was just be really, really sure you understand what your water's chemistry is before you go doing really big water changes because the shock in, you know, water hardness, the carbonate hardness, the pH, there's a lot of variables in there that you can shift. Uh, pretty significantly if you're not familiar with what you're doing with your water. So uh, take those large, large water changes uh, very carefully and make sure you know what you're doing. So that's it for today. Let me get on this. I don't want to get onto another topic and then have the tank overflow while we're standing here getting it on video. That, that would make for a good video. All right, everybody, make sure you're subscribed. Don't forget this is my 125-gallon New World tank. And I will be doing that video very soon about the old tank syndrome. So again, if you're subscribed, you won't miss any of that. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you real soon in the next one. And I realized that I've still got some water from my original water change three days ago. And so I decided to do a side by side by side comparison. So this is our water change from the original water. I did about the size of the water change we just saw and that was what we got after the original water change. So we started with this today and then we ended up with this today. So we're definitely working in the right direction. We're down to where that is now orange, but that is very much at the top end of orange. I'd still put that at least at 40 parts per million maybe even a scooch higher than that but it is still in the orange rather than in the red so we're moving in the right direction but that is after you know a 50 percent water change we'll call it maybe a 60 percent water change and then this is after another roughly 50 percent water change and we're just now getting into the upper end of the orange so the nitrate was definitely getting up there in the tank and we're going to wait another day or two and do one more uh, massive water change and hopefully we can bring it down to where it's very very clearly in the uh, yellowy orange area we can get it down to maybe 20 parts per million or something like that but we will see because within just a few days those nitrates are going to be climbing back up again that's the problem with a real heavily stocked tank like this it's hard to get on top of it because the nitrate builds up so fast so we'll see but thanks for watching hope you enjoyed See you on the next one.